every client that gets in the room with me is like, wow, this is sometimes like a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of work because you're creating something that's like a part of like this giant brand that you are creating, that you're like built. So I think starting would be recognizing what you want to look like. One of my questions is always like name two public figures that you feel like your style aligns with. Everybody needs like, you know, a great jean, a good denim. There's a million ways to wear jeans. I would say like a really amazing pair of denim is something that male and female should own. You were the classic girl, you were the intern, you were running around doing all the things, photocopying stuff. What was the moment where it shifted and you turned into the stylist, choosing the clothes and putting it on the person? Oh, I remember exactly. I was, um, Go to a big store like a Saks, a Neiman's, Bloomingdale's is great. Anything with like a broad range of designers or styles. Pick five, six things that you need to try. Start there, try them on. See how they look on you, see how you feel in them. Because you might get in there and just realize it's not the way you want to feel at all. Or you might get in there and be like, oh my God, this is exactly what I want to look like. I would say 50 to 60% of the time, they put it on and they're like, oh, this is like really cool. And I'm like, I know, I told you, just see. It's the only way that you're really going to grow and shift and, you know, evolve. Welcome to the Jen Gottlieb Show. Hi, buddy. Hi. <laughs> All right. I am so excited that you're here. You flew all the way down. So for those of you listening, welcome to the Jen Gottlieb Show or watching. Welcome to the Jen Gottlieb Show. This is a really, really, really special episode because not only do I have one of my very best friends in the world here, but I also have the person that most of you are the most curious about. I get to talk to (laughs) a lot of people. I interview a lot of people. I connect with a lot of people at events. And the number one person that people want to know who they are in my dms is who is your stylist (laughs) who dresses you who puts you in that because people are always saying like i love your outfit where did you get it i'm like i don't know annabeth duval got it she's my stylist she dresses me so today i begged her i dragged her because annabeth doesn't love doing all this stuff but i got (laughs) her here and i said please come let's talk about style let's talk about our story let's talk about all the amazing experiences you've had in the fashion space And then we're going to bring it back to how you all, the listeners, can dress in a way that makes you feel unbelievably confident and like your most authentic version of yourself. Because we'll go back there. But when I met you, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know that there was really such thing as a stylist. (laughs) And second of all, I didn't know who the hell I was and what my style was. And you've transformed my life and my brand. And I want everyone that's listening to be able to just get some of your your expertise and, and, and hear your take on fashion. Let's do it. So let's back it up a little bit to when you first, because I, like I said, I didn't know what a stylist was. I didn't even know that was a thing until I watched like the Rachel Zoe show. And I was like, oh, oh God. people dress people. This is a thing. Yeah. When did you understand that you could be a fashion stylist and you decided that you wanted to be one? Well, there was a moment in college when, um, someone a couple of years older than me had commented on a pair of Chanel sunglasses that I had purchased at Saks. I was working at Saks um, as a sales associate in, in college. And she had just gotten back from New York and she was like, oh my God, all the fashion editors in New York are wearing these glasses. And I went home and there was Google back then, I guess. So I Googled or looked up what a fashion editor was. And that was sort of where I had the beginnings of like trying to figure out how to weasel my way into the fashion world. So um, I went and a year later begged every uh, magazine on the planet, every fashion editor back then, you had to just look at the masthead and send a fax and call. And like, there was no real emails, no nothing like that. I'm like dating myself, but like, you really had to like, you know, try and get in contact with people that way. And um, finally I got someone at Nylon Magazine on the phone and he changed my life. He accepted my internship and I moved to New York and never left and started working, um, you know, as a fashion editor. And that's where I learned a lot about styling. So fashion editors typically are the ones responsible for, you know, pitching stories, um, coming up with the clothing ideas. You watch the shows, you find the trends and you sort of like translate that into the ma- uh, for the masses. 
And um, that was my beginning. And then from there, I went on to Vogue and 17, a few other places. So that's where I, you know, I learned at Vogue probably from the greatest. I would watch Grace Coddington, Camilla Nickerson every day. And it just really was like something that resonated with me and it stuck. And that's, you know, where it came from. Take me back to that time because it sounds very much like Devil Wears Prada. Like it really <laughs> sounds like that movie. And I can just envision you as this young girl really wanting to break into fashion and having to wait for someone to, to pick you and bring you into the cool kids club. And you're entering, let's talk the <laughs> Vogue for the first time. You enter Vogue right. and you're around all of these fashion icons that know all of this about fashion. Were you scared? No, I was very naive. I was a girl from a small town in Texas and I didn't know the greatness that I was being surrounded with. And it really helped me because I was Andre Leontale's assistant. And he now, I mean, we all know he's one of the greatest fashion icons that ever lived. And um, I walked into my interview with him and uh, I'll never forget a black Calvin Klein dress and borrowed pearls and borrowed black Prada shoes from the nylon closet where I was an intern. And um, I <laughs> went in and he looked me up and down and says, you look fabulous. What are you wearing? And I sat down and we had like a 10 minute conversation and he hired me on the spot. So, you know, I didn't understand who I was sitting across from. And I th think looking back that that really helped me because I wasn't scared. I wasn't like intimidated in any way. You know, I really learned and I sat right next to Camilla Nickerson and I think she's one of the greatest stylists ever. And Wait, Tammy, who is that for people that don't know? She's just, um, she was at Vogue forever. She's just a very well-known, brilliant uh, fashion stylist, like in the editorial and magazine world. So would it be fair to say she's like your Michael Jordan? Like, yeah, she's like one of them. One of the top, one of the goats in the for industry. For me, she is. I mean, right. you know, art like that is subjective, but for me, she is. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I sat right next to her and her assistant every day and like, you know, was not afraid to ask questions, was not afraid to like beg to go on a shoot with her. And I think a lot of that came from the fact that I was just so naive and so young. And um, because of that, I feel like I got like a really strong education and a really good like, you know, foundation for moving forward into doing, you know, what I do now, but also what I've done in the past and things like that. You got in the room, you surrounded yourself with the best of the best, and you listened and you learned and you paid attention. Yes, I got in the room, and I'm not going to lie, luck was um, luck, the universe, like whatever. I mean, I did have that, you know, on my side for sure for those first few years. And then, you know, it's like you take, you learn what you can and you ask all the questions you can, and then, you, you know, you're kind of on your own, but I'm not going to say that I did it all on my own, <laughs> but... But you worked hard. Yes, and I think yes. that there's something to be said for that because you you didn't have an ego in, in an industry where I think a lot of people do. And you're like, no. I'll get coffee. I will go borrow a pair of, of shoes. I will do whatever it takes. Yeah. I'm just envisioning this movie of The Devil Wears Prada. Yes. I was probably very sim similar. Like you worked your way up. You listened, you learned, you paid attention and you were like, I'm paying my dues right now. Yeah. I mean, poor Anne Hathaway had to deal with the version of Anna which I didn't, thankfully. Um, but uh, yeah, you you do. You you know, I was raised in the school of like you do anything you're asked and anything is possible. You make it happen. You just and it served me well moving forward because you know with other clients and other jobs and a million other things that I've done. Like you know, if somebody asks for something crazy, like you really try your best to try and make it happen and. Because you do, you come from the side of, well, I anything's kind of possible. So, yeah, um, yeah, it was a good foundation, a good education for sure. I I loved it. What did a day in the life look like when you were, a, were you a stylist at Vogue? You were no, I was an assistant. I was Andre's assistant and I was the closet girl. Th so tell me, what's the closet girl? <laughs> so the closet girl is the famed position where you run the closet. So you traffic all the samples in and out. Um, there's a there's like a jewelry closet girl and a fashion closet girl. I was the fashion closet girl. So, um, yeah, I tracked all the samples. I got to see all the couture firsthand. I was yelled at if something wasn't sent on time or, and I prepared all the racks for all the editors. So like I, you know, their stories for the cover was in front of me. The story for that, you know, main editorial in the back was right there. Um, I would go on fittings. I, you know, Camilla was nice enough to take me on David and Victoria Beckham's cover shoot fitting and I got to fit Victoria and 
Um, I got like thrown bones like that occasionally, like um, fun stuff to like when I was doing a good job, they would reward me with letting me do more work, but do like, you know, fun things like that. Go on a cover shoot. Um, I was on an iconic um, Stephen Mizell shoot with Pat, Pat McGrath that like in the fashion world is like really one of the most iconic shoots. And it's like on every reference board ever. And I got to be on set for that. So it was, it was cool. Like I got to see and do a lot. But yeah, day. Oh, so you wanted to know a day. That's yeah. The question. Um, well, you have to get in before Anna. Um, Anna Wintour. Yes. You have to get in before Anna. And a lot of times Andre would come in before me because he would be sitting at my desk um, typing. He had this um, like section of the book called Style Facts. And so he would be writing and he'd write at my desk all the time. So sometimes I'd get in at like 630 or 7 and he would be sitting at my desk um, when he was in town, when he was writing. Um, but you'd have to go and I'd have to Xerox the book. Um, I think there's a scene like that in Des Devil Wears Prada. Xerox yeah, the book, meaning the actual Vogue magazine. Well, yeah. So Anna has, there's like a spiral binder um, that she is delivered to her house every night and she makes changes and um, it's in, it lives in the art department. So um, her assistants would pick it up in the morning and bring it in. And then I would have to go and um, go to the art department, make like seven copies of each page um, of all the changes, and I'd have to deliver them to all the departments, so all the fashion departments. Um, so that was the first thing. And then I have to roll out all the racks um, for each editor. So for Camilla, her racks that she's working on could be the cover, could be something else. Um, Grace Coddington, who's just the most, I mean, she's incredible. Um, Tawny Goodman was there at the time. Um, and then there were sittings editors, which were like lower level editors that were shooting like FOB is what we call front of book. Front of book. Front of book. Yeah. Which smaller stories. And then, you know, we'd roll out the racks and start the days, usually with returns, usually with, you know, things coming in. I mean, the messenger center calls you 50 times a day and then you have editors yelling at you for their clothes and you just do what you're told. <laughs> And you work until seven o'clock at night, then you start it all over again the next day. But you're literally in it. You're in the dream that you had. You were doing it. You were in the the center, the epicenter of fashion. Yeah, I'll say there's no greater center of fashion probably than, um, you know, either backstage at a show, like a big show, like in Paris, and Milan, something like that, or the, you know, Vogue closet. Is it really a mean girl kind of a place? Does it like... I didn't experience that, no. Didn't. It's not. It's very tough. It's not for the week. But I did not. There was no mean girl vibes. People were very respectful and um, really willing to teach. And I had an incredible experience there. That's awesome. I, it's not a long term thing. It's very difficult. You don't really have much of a life. But You're listening to The Jen Gottlieb Show. Well, you've got great work ethic now. Uh, you're, you have one of the best work ethics I've ever seen. Do you think that a lot of that comes from you having to push yourself to the brink and seeing that you can? Yeah, and I think it's just those early days of in the fashion industry where even when I was an intern, it was kind of the same hours, kind of the same level of, you know, productivity expected out of you. So it, I think that it was just how I was taught from day one. And... Um, also, just the fact that I've spent my career being a complete and total hustler, like working for myself for the most part, that also fuels it. So it's, you know, it comes from a lot of different things. But yeah, I would say that the the Vogue boot camp. Yeah, that was that's part of it for sure. I want to sp spill a little bit of tea if we can, and you don't have to name names, but I know that I, I, I'm just feeling what my listener is asking right now in their mind because you you got access to being on sets with major celebrities and dressing them and doing some of the most, yeah, experiencing vulnerable moments with very famous people. Yeah. Did, was there anybody that really surprised you in a negative or positive way? And you don't have to name names, but you can give me an experience. I will absolutely not name names. Yeah. Um, I really have to like, you know, look at maybe they're not having the best day because a lot of times I did have one experience with someone who is notoriously like lovely and I just felt like maybe she really wasn't having the best day and you never know what's going on in their personal lives with their personal relationships like with their business like so I was young when I worked with her so I had like kind of a bad taste in my mouth for a long time and then you know just everybody else was just like oh she's so great she's so great and then I just really like had to look at myself and realize that there's, I've been on set where I haven't had good days either. 
And so I think that that's kind of it's very hard. You can't really judge somebody when you're with them for like eight or 10 hours. It's that's not fair. So I don't talk about any anyone that I've ever worked yeah. with. And I certainly don't try to judge them too harshly. Now, if you're making, you know, really obscene comments or something that's inappropriate like that, then yes, I'll judge you for that. And I probably wouldn't want to be on set with you again. Um, but, you know, just generally like, you know, there are people, everybody's, I think that's beautiful. I really like that statement. Like you never, and this is accurate in life where right? we have experiences with people who are like, oh, I don't like that person because yes. of that experience that I just had with them. And I think that it's important actually, just me hearing you say that gave me a takeaway to remember we all have shit going on in our lives. Yeah. You have no idea what happened to that person that day or what's really going on behind the scenes yeah. and giving them grace and just reminding yourself, you know what, like empathize with them because maybe they're having a bad day. And instead of jumping to a conclusion, like that person's a diva. Yeah. Maybe they're having a bad day. Yeah. And it comes out in all different ways. And I did find out later that she was going through a divorce um, that nobody had known about. And, you know, we were shooting a cover shoot and um, it just, you know, it's I don't hard. Know, it's just really hard. Like life is hard in general. <laughs> so I feel like you just have to give people grace and, you know, it's you really cannot judge one person on on this weird set where you're making them dress up and take photos of them or do video or do like you can't really it's an odd it's like an odd situation anyways and surrounded by a crew of people that they have no idea who they are and like what they want and you know I don't know it's you can't really but I, I've also had some like incredible experiences that I will name names Megan Trainer was literally one of the most pleasurable people I've ever worked with I worked with her the day before she won her Grammy she sang me a song and um, we recorded it for my business partner at the time's daughter. I will say Kylie Jenner was one of the nicest people to work with. We had a long day, 14 hours. She was there. She recorded a message to my husband's soccer team. Like one of the goalies was having a rough day. <laughs> she recorded a message for her. Like I'm trying to think. There have been some like great. Oh, Rita Ora was like just the coolest played the piano for me, like just the coolest, nicest day, like so chill. Like, I mean, there've been for every not so great experience, there've been 50 that have been like incredible. So, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so, I love hearing those stories because it just yeah. it really like reminds you, these are all human beings. Oh yeah. Right. And you're putting clothes on them. So let's talk more about going- it's very intimate. <laughs> yeah. Being a stylist. So you were the classic girl, you were the intern, you yeah. were running around doing all the things, photocopying stuff. What was the moment where it shifted and you turned into the stylist, choosing the clothes and putting it on the person? Oh, I remember exactly. I was um, I was a fashion editor at Jane Magazine, which is no longer around. Um, and I'll just say I ended up getting fired from Jane. Um, Why? Because I was freelancing and technically I had permission, but I was freelancing and working, doing a fashion show with Naomi Campbell and Rosie Huntington. And I came back after the show and they were like sorry you don't work here anymore <laughs> so it was worth it and it, that was amazing Your entrepreneurial hustle. I was I, I got I got fired for hustling uh side hustling same buddy and um but I did love my time at Jane and I was a I was a fashion editor but I was like an associate fashion editor or something I don't remember my title exactly but um I got there it was right after I left Vogue and I was just dying to be on set and there were some people that were like, you know, she's not ready. She's not ready. She's not ready or whatever. And then finally, one day they came to me and they gave me a little shoot and it was Khalees. And she had just gotten engaged to Nas, I think. She milkshake, my milkshake yes. brings up. Okay. It was like, and she had this, I'll never forget. She let me try it on this, her engagement ring. I think it was Nas. Isn't that who she was married to? I can't. I think so. I think she was married to Nas. It was like a giant heart diamond. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And it was my very first shoot. And I told her it was my first shoot on my own. And she was so excited for me. And we just had the best day. And that's the day that I transitioned from an assistant to being an editor. Yeah. Stylist. And so being a, I, I don't think a, a lot of people that are listening right now might not even understand what a stylist job is. Yeah. Can you talk about what, what a stylist does Let's say even a stylist, like what you do for me and your clients now, like how that works. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of different stylists. Um, what I do for you, we met on set and um, you were starting to build your brand and 
you were slowly starting to take photos and to be more public and do things like that. And we met and you just wanted a more cohesive look or you wanted to feel like you were, I'm trying to remember, like you were just like in the throes of beginning to like do all of this stuff. And I had no idea what to put on my body. Like I just, I didn't know. And I, I wanted your expertise and I saw you and I was like, holy crap, she's an expert at this, at picking out clothes for people. I didn't know that this happened. Yeah. <laughs> and so you had told me a little bit about what you wanted to do and what you were like venturing into. And then I, of course, you know, I mean, that's like the only skill I have. Like I knew exactly how I'd want to dress you. I just see it. And based on who you are at that time, we had spent a little bit of time together. And so I, you know, take your personality and body type and what you're doing and who you are in your audience and just sort of put it together and like make you look as chic as possible and try to do it in a way where it's recognizable a little bit. Like I approach it the same way that I approached like shooting editorial, which is my first love, um, which is what I did for 20 years. And, um, you know, if you're a really, really good stylist in the editorial world, people can kind of look at your work and know that you did it or, you know, have like, oh, that looks like she did it or that looks like Annabeth's work or that looks like, you know, so-and-so. I mean, like an artist, like you look at an artist's work and you're like, oh, that's, you know. So meaning people in the fashion industry would be able to look at a story you did in a magazine and say, oh, I I bet Annabeth Duval styled this. It it has her taste. Yeah. I mean, it's a very broad, broad statement. But if you look at my work, it has a look Mm -hmm. like there's a look. Um, If you look at, you know, Basquiat, it has a look. If you look at Mizell, it has a look. Like if you look at all of these people in all of these different art forms, there's a look to what they do. And um, I try to do that for you guys as well, because it's just the best form of branding outside of like, you know, all of your graphics and like all of your, you know, like, you know, book covers and things like that. It's like you looking and feeling and, you know, living your brand as authentically as you can um it's just it's like that's the win for me i will never forget when we did our first like our first real moment was and i want to talk about it because i think it's important for everyone to know my first like moment with you fashion moment not have to remind me yeah i'm gonna remind you it was a stage look because there's been so annabeth has styles you style all the photo shoots and that's like what you think traditionally when you think of a stylist like coming on set picking out all of the clothes for the photo shoots and we would do that but i remember when we went we went shopping in new york city at bloomingdale's on 59th and lax i think it was one of our first shopping experiences for an event that i was on fair advantage live the event that chris and i were doing together yes it was like my first time speaking on stage yes and i didn't have a big budget at all. I know. I, I, at all. Started, we started at a different place that we're at now. Did not sure. have much money. And so we found this red dress. Oh, the light, light, light dress. dress. Yes. It was a one shoulder dress. But it here was the moment in time where I realized, oh, this is why I need someone like this. Because it it was okay. It wasn't great. We put it on. I was like, it was a great price. It, you know, it's not, it yeah. was, it was, it was red. It was like one shoulder. It felt like me. I felt confident in it, but there was something off. And you came behind me and you pinched the sides oh, yeah. and you said, we just need to tailor this yeah. and it'll be spectacular. Yeah. And we had that, what was it? A $200 dress or something. Not even, not even maybe a hundred dollars. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. A hundred dollar dress tailored for 20 bucks, like take the sides in. Yeah. And I put that thing on and I felt like I could conquer the world and I that dress went viral so many times I still see internet. photos of that dress like I still see like random you'll see videos and reels because those there's one talk that I did in that dress where like it yeah. took off because of that dress That's so funny and I I think it was the dress but I really feel like it was the way that I felt in the dress because it fit me perfectly and I think that that was the first thing that I learned from you oh you can tailor things yeah. maybe it's not the most expensive piece so it doesn't fit perfect but if you spend the 20 bucks and you go to a dry cleaner and you have them take in the sides or you have them hem it a tiny bit and you make it fit for you, yeah, suddenly it's like made for you and you feel incredible in it. Yeah, it's not about the amount of money that you're spending. I mean, I have clients that tailor Zara. Like there's, but it looks like a million bucks because I still do that. We still right. do that sometimes. Yeah. I have to talk to you about my new favorite thing. This is my new obsession, my absolute favorite toy in my home right now that's helping me be healthier. And y'all know how obsessed I am with that. So whenever I'm podcasting or at my desk doing Zoom calls, I make sure that I have at least three bottles of water next to me. Drinking enough water is so essential for me to feel energized, healthy, 
clear and clean and all the things. And having safe, clean water is the last thing I want to worry about. But unfortunately, according to extensive research by the Environmental Working Group, three out of four homes in America have harmful contaminants in their tap water. And that's why I don't trust tap water anymore. So I am living for my brand new AquaTrue, which is a water purifier that sits on your countertop. It takes no installation and it creates purified, clean drinking water for you all day long. It's amazing. Uh, They have water purifiers to fit every single type of home from installation-free countertop purifiers, which is what I have, to higher capacity under the sink options too. AquaTrue even has a Wi-Fi connected purifier and mineral boost options. It's amazing. The filters are affordable. They're long lasting. You don't have to change the filters every two to three months like most water, uh, water filters and all of those other machines that we have to create clean water. AquaTrue filters last for six months to two years. Just one set of filters from their classic purifier makes it the equivalent of 4,500 bottles of water. That's less than three cents a bottle. Plus, you'll save the environment from tons of plastic waste. I love my AquaTrue water filter, and you will too. AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com and enter code GENG, J-E-N-G, at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue, A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com and use code GENG. I cannot wait to hear how you love your AquaTrue because I am obsessed with mine. Happy water filtering. And I think it's important it's one. to share about just for people that like manifestation, manifesting yes. stories. <laughs> this is a fun manifesting story for you guys. Yeah. I, I like to share because we really have had them. And it's so cool to be like sitting here talking about it. It's very much like a full circle moment. Yeah. When we first started shopping together and we had like our $200 budget or our $300 budget or, you know, and we were like just trying to find what we could find for me to go on, do these little tiny shoots or stages that I was doing when we were first starting out, Annabeth and I would share our dreams. It was like a, we really would like walk around and be like, one day Mm -hmm. we're going to shop on that floor. Mm -hmm. We're not going to shop on this floor. One day we're going to shop on that floor. One day you're going to be pulling in all kinds of things that like we can't find anywhere else. And we're going to be, I'm going to be speaking all over the world and we're going to be getting paid to do this. And it's going to be on such a higher level. And we, we believed it. We had so much fun just dreaming. Yeah. And it's crazy because those dreams are now our our reality, the majority of them. Yeah. I mean, the, it was always in dressing rooms. Yep. We've had a lot of good manifesting in dressing rooms all over New York City. All over. Um, Yeah. And, you know, I mean, my dream was more one day getting you in to certain designers and having you wear certain things and having big moments. And, you know, and your dream was to, like, build this brand. And it's just beautiful. Like, it's really happened. I mean, now we now I put you in everything I could ever want to put you in and, uh It's just, it's really cool. It's great. It's really fun. And the reason I want to share that is not to be like, oh, now we spend so much money on clothes. It's not even about that. No, definitely not. At all. It's really about having a friend, having someone in your life that you can dream with, that you can dream big with. And we both supported each other on our journey together. And we both constantly have just been like, we're growing together. We're like, this is just still just the beginning for us. And if you have a friend like that or someone that you work with or someone that you work and friendship with and life with, allow each other to just play. Like, silly idea day like let's just walk around and pretend or or visualize what it could possibly be like and we've had so many moments like that and it is so fun to be able to realize those moments together as you grow together and so I'm just super grateful to be sitting here even talking about that and realizing like one of the next levels of our dreaming together yes so this, cool this is very crazy for it's me. so cool yeah it's great I love it. So cool. Okay. So let's talk more about like actual style and tips for our listeners. Yeah. Uh, and I know many of you, I get so, I mean, whenever I post about clothes or anything like that, like it's become part of my brand because I really enjoy it. Not because I'm good at it. It's because I have this this amazing unfair advantage next to me that has helped me become good at it. But I really built what I've built, I think, because I felt so confident in who I was on stage. And you always, you, you come onto our calls for our people all the time and you teach. And 
what I love about what you say is it doesn't matter how much money you're spending. It doesn't matter what designer you're in. Mm -mm. The point, and it doesn't matter if you're on trend or if you're wearing something that is, is really cool right now. It's really all about feeling amazing in your clothes. Yeah. Let's talk more about that for someone that wants to find their true style to start like taking pictures and being on stage and being seen and how they can start. First of all, I'll say that being, yeah, definitely money, designer, um, shape, size, color, rules. Like I'm not my train of thought. Like if you work with me or have had a conversation or have been on a call, you realize that that's not like a thing for me. Um, I definitely feel like if you are wanting to wear something or you want to wear a color or you want to feel a certain way, there's always a way to make it happen. Again, coming going back to like all things are possible, but um, you know, I mean, there's exceptions to that here and there. Like I don't think, you know, crop tops are appropriate for everything, but um, I feel like if there's a style that you're drawn to, um, working that into your like daily life and working that into like what you're wearing is like easily, easily done for sure. So I think starting would be recognizing what you want to look like. Um, I have questions when you start working with me. One of them, it's so funny, I got emails yesterday. I have this event on Monday with like 10 women. And one of my questions is always like, name two public figures that you feel like your style aligns with or that you would like your style to align with. I just got goosebumps. That's a great question for people to ask themselves. Yeah, the answers are amazing. And I was on the plane on the way here yesterday, like chuckling with some of them because people really put a lot of thought into it. And it's it's so funny because through those two an those two answers, I can tell so much about who I'm about to work with. And um, so I find that to be really helpful. And if you can find two people and then you do like a little bit of photo research on them, if it's somebody you really like, like say, you know, I'm Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, like from the 90s, like uh, everything I love. She's simple and white and black and clean lines and slip dresses and you know, silk tops and easy jeans and like that kind of stuff. Like if that's your vibe, if that's what you want, then, you know, get on Pinterest, do a little photo research, figure it out. And then like, depending on your budget, sort of like go in and I, I do a lot of online shopping because I know how things fit. I know how, I know extensively about designers and um, how they cut and like designer versus contemporary like I know all of that but I really encourage people just to go to the store go to a big store like a Saks a Neiman's like go to a Zara go to um, a Bloomingdale's is great anything with like you know a, a broad range of designers or styles or anything that's like I say Zara because they knock everyone off so it's like a lot of contemporary shapes um, and then just start trying things on have your hit list I need my black slip dress. I need my oversized blazer. I need, you know, pick five, six things that you need to try. Start there. Try them on. See how they look on you. See how you feel in them because you might get in there and just realize it's not the way you want to feel at all. Or you might get in there and be like, oh, my God, this is exactly what I want to look like. And then you can, like, build on that. And you don't need to buy a full new wardrobe. You can just start with a few pieces and sort of incorporate them into your daily life and to see how you're wearing them, how you're feeling in them. Like, are you reaching for them when you get into your closet? Um, I really don't encourage people to keep things or buy things that they feel like, oh, I'll wear that at some point. Like, you know, the space is, you know, extremely important in a closet. And so like having things that are sitting there that you're not wearing, um, it just takes up, it just takes up like mental space. It takes up like, it, you know, every time you see it, you're like, oh, maybe I should wear it. Maybe I shouldn't. Like the indecisive thing pops in. Like, I don't know. You, you want your closet to be, you want to love everything in it. You want it to be simple and you want to feel like really good with no matter what you reach your hand in and pull out. So my favorite thing to do with you, other than obviously I love shopping with you, but I love when you come over and you clean out my closet. Yeah. Like, and you do that for clients. Like it's you go brutal. to you a don't closet. It's brutal? It's, br <laughs> it's brutal, but I love it. And here's what I also love. You always tell me, like, I'm like, do I, you're like, you don't need that. Don't buy that. You don't need to spend that much money on yeah. that. You do not need that. I'm big on that. You oh. spend your money. That's no problem. But I, it, there's so much to buy all the time. And it, don't keep things that you don't like, you know, I, I don't, I tell that that's not exclusive to you. That's like every single client, whether you have 
you know, I was telling you this the other day, I have a client at $5,000 McQueen jacket. I'm like, it's beautiful, but like, you're not going to wear that. You don't need that. Send that back. The money goes somewhere else always, or, you know, you find a cheaper version or you find a version that's the same amount of money, but like something that you would wear more often. That's like, like maybe a little more casual, like, it, I don't know. There's just ways to do it. I, yeah, do not keep things that you don't feel like you're going to wear like tomorrow. And we, for listeners, I like to use the real real for designer consignment. It's yeah. so simple. And you might find some of my clothes that you like on the real real right yeah. now. Uh, so it's a, it's a really, there's a lot of different consignment apps. Um, but I would love to ask you for both for male and for female. Yeah. Are there, what are like maybe four statement pieces that everyone should have in their closet? And, and you can mix and match and do lots of different things with those four statement pieces. Yeah. I mean, it definitely... It, if it does vary from person to person because, you know, there's a lot of women out there who don't feel comfortable wearing pants. There's a lot of women out there who don't wear dresses. Mm -hmm. So it's like it is going to vary from that's a good like, point. person to person piece wise. I mean, everybody needs like, you know, a great jean, a good denim, like, you know, one that you just like love and feel great in. Whether you can wear it with a bodysuit, you can wear it with a T-shirt, you can wear it with a silk blouse. You can wear it with like a blazer. Like, I mean, there's a million ways to wear jeans. I would say like a really amazing pair of denim is something that male and female should own. You know, an overcoat, like a great overcoat. I don't care what your style is, like, and or unless, I mean, I know you live in Florida, so it's a little bit different down here, but like, you know, maybe it translates into like a great leather jacket or something like that. Like a great coat that you always want to put on. Like mine is just a long camel um kind of like oversized uh it's so i see you in it constructed it's, it's constructed super cool over. yeah you wear like, that with like sweatpants and a t-shirt and you look dressed yes. and then i can also wear it with like you know black tie like mm -hmm. it's just i love that coat it looks good with everything um you have a great leather jacket that kind of fills in that position like you wore to dinner last night i've seen you in like you've worn leather jackets over you know, two thousand dollar dresses, and you've worn leather jackets over like workout wear. Like it just like works. Like it's. Just I love that. Yeah. Let, let me just say for the leather jacket, ladies, the leather jacket that I'm wearing right now is uh, Coast C O S. Mm -hmm. It was probably a hundred dollars. Yeah. And I wear it. It's not real leather. I wear it everywhere all the time. Yeah. And so you don't need to. It doesn't need to be a gigantic investment. Yeah. No. And on that respect, I mean, my leather jacket is vintage. I bought it from Beacon's Closet in New York. Like, if you're a vintage shopper, you know, I mean and you're lucky enough to stumble, stumble upon like an old like Wilson leather, like leather jacket, like buy it. Like that's, I love that kind of stuff too. Like it doesn't have to be new, doesn't have to be, you know, the newest thing, whatever. Um, so I would say like a coat or, or jacket is staple and it works for both. Um, great footwear. So for a guy, I would, I would say like some kind of like great work boot, like some, some kind of boot that you can wear with your jeans casual that you can throw on with a t-shirt denim like you know something that's very comfortable that you can like live in for women i would say like a great flat um a great wedge like something that's just easy that you always want to put on you know it depends on the time of year depends on where you're going for me it's my margella slides like i put them on with literally the t-shirt i wore the night before and jeans and i feel very put together like mm -hmm. just as easy so you know that's probably another staple that I would say something great that doesn't hurt your feet. It is a little bit cheaper um, than a sneaker, you know, something in that, in that realm. And for the fourth one, I don't know. I mean, women, I would say a great black dress is a great investment. You can wear it for anything. Just make sure it fits really well. Um, shape doesn't really matter. It could be oversized, it could be fitted, it could be tight, it could be slip dress, it could be whatever. Um, and then for guys, I mean, a great fitting suit. There is nothing sexier on a man than a nice, dark, well-fitting suit. Mm. Okay. Like we have to really choose sides here, then I think that's probably where I would go. I mean, you, you should have a black dress in your closet, women, that like is amazing. Guys, you should have a great dark suit. So you never know what's gonna happen where you need to come do an, go to an event, you don't have anything, you just throw on your black dress, you throw on your suit, you're good yeah. to go. And it's like, you don't have to think about it because I do find that a lot of the more formal things that come up or more um, 
you know, dinners, not even just like weddings, but like events or like something like that where you actually do, there is a dress code. A lot of it, like it comes up kind of last minute and some people are like, oh my God, I have nothing to wear. So if you have those in your wardrobe, I mean, you're, it's easy. You're covered. Simple. That was just really valuable. Like four things that you could have in your closet. Very simple. Very, very easy. broad question. With it is very broad. broad. It, there's so many it, like yeah. individual situations yeah. where you really need to know. Like yeah. if you're I'm speaking like just completely broad, terms. broad. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that that's important to point that out. Get outside of your comfort zone and into your best life one small step at a time. I, I have so many more questions for you. I want to talk about this is actually something that happened and I want to hear your opinion. I don't know if we actually had this conversation, so I think it's important to have it in front of everybody. Okay. And I've posted about it. Obviously, I've got my style that I love, you love, we've created it together. I feel so confident in it. And it's like girly, feminine, kind of sexy sometimes. I show skin and I'm speaking now at a lot of really big places. Yep. And my agent called me one time, uh, this was a couple of years ago, and he was like, you know, you lost two stages because... oh you're too, they say that you're too provocative. And I said to him, well, this is who I am and it's their loss. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me personally, I'd love to hear your opinion when it comes to brand and speaking and dressing yourself for stage. I guess it depends on your personal goals. But for me, I was like, eh, me being me and building this brand and standing true to who I believe I wanna help and how I wanna help people that I want them to be their most authentic selves. I don't think that it would be good for me to say, oh, okay, I'm going to completely transform the way that I dress so that other people can say, oh yeah, she's now wearing the blouse and the pants that I wanted her to be in. And now I can invite her on the stage. I have very strong opinions about that. Okay. I can't wait to hear. I can imagine with yes. Um, I think it's ridiculous that, that they would even ask. It makes me angry. And like, I, this has happened to another one of my clients where they asked her to wear pink on a podcast. Uh, the producer did, and she doesn't wear pink. She wears black and, you know, she's very chic and dark green. And and I just said the same thing to her that I would say to you, like, absolutely not. Like, you don't change your brand and who you are for anyone, like, ever. Like, if they don't want you on the podcast, then don't go. Or there's a happy medium, like, between pink and black or between you not getting booked for a job because you're in a certain type of dress versus like, um, you know, you like just not showing up like at all. Like it's, it's just insane to me that people would even like bring that up or have the balls to even say that if I'm being honest, especially in 2024. Like I, I think in your case, you have such a track record of being so appropriate and so feminine and so powerful in everything that you wear. Right. And I just feel like then you don't need to be on that stage anyways, because it's probably someone who was making those comments that doesn't know a lot about that realm, but also has maybe very different views of the world than you do. <laughs> Um, I don't know how to politically correctly say all of this, but like, you know, it's just, you have to consider the source of where it's coming from. And I'm, well, I don't know, but I would not be surprised if the source is just something that doesn't align with you anyways. So if that's the case, then, you know, I mean, I would just say like, F it. Like, that's what I did. Yeah. That's, that's what I did. What I was like, F it. It's fine. More will come. Like more will come. I, I get to a point no where... Doubt. People are excited to invite me to see what now it's like, oh, what's Jen going to wear? That's like part of the thing. Like, what's yeah. Jen going to wear? Like, it's it's become part of it. And that's fun for me. And it doesn't need to be fun for everyone, um, but it's fun for me and anyone else that's listening that likes style and fashion. It's part of what you do and it's part of what makes it fun. That's OK. And I feel like style is super fun right now. And everyone's yeah. pushing boundaries and it, because the world is a different place. Yeah. And I feel like you work really hard on your website. You work really hard on your branding. You work really hard on like your, uh, you know, like your let's your speaker school that's coming out. Like you work really hard on like all of these programs. You work really hard on your style. It's like like every client that gets in the room with me is like, wow, this is sometimes like a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah, it's a lot of work because you're creating something that's like a part of like this 
giant mm-hmm. brand that you are creating, that you've like built. And so it's specific and it's a lot of work and placing all of these outfits for all of these events. You know, I consider the audience for every stage that you take. I consider um, like the the type of person that you're speaking to. Like we don't not think about like that. It's It's always in consideration. Like, so I just feel like it's, part of your brand. We put a lot of thought into it. We put a lot of effort into making it right. And if it's not right for someone else, then you showing up and wearing something that's not authentic to you and your brand is just, it's no, it's a no for me. It's no for me. (laughs) All right. So for the people that are listening that feel like they are just not stylish and they can't get it together and they can never pick something out that makes them feel good. What would be your first piece of advice to them to just get started other than thinking of like who they admire? So let so I like that advice. Like, who do they admire in the world? Yeah. And then like going and trying things on and like playing with things. Do you think that that everyone should have a stylist? Like, how could they have access to somebody like you? I mean, there's a lot on the internet. Like, what, it, someone that's sitting here, they're like, I'm still lost. I really want to be fashionable. Oh, well, they're not alone. I mean, I'm lost sometimes too. I open my closet just the same as everybody else. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. What I should isn't say. that isn't that amazing? Wait, we need to make a timestamp on this moment. It's, that's a problem we that all everyone feel has. That way, yeah, right? Yeah, we all course. do. We all feel insecure. We don't know who we are today. And how do you feel about also? This is actually a really great topic to segue into for the person that's like, I'm always changing. One day I want to be boho. The next day I want to be like New York City. Yeah. But like the evolution. Yeah. So I, I my word of the year is evolution. Okay. And evolving into who I'm becoming. And like your style can evolve. Oh gosh, yes. Yes. Like, and I'm sure you've seen that over the years of being a stylist, seeing the fashion industry evolve and then your clients evolve in their fashion. Yeah, of course. So basically what I'm okay. saying is the person that's like, I, I want to like kind of like I see this celebrity on a stage, by the way, that celebrity was dressed by a stylist. That celebrity probably had their outfit picked out for them, but whatever yeah. they agree. And like that's their style and that's their brand. Like I want to look like that. How do I go from wearing like my sweats or some kind of totally other style to then starting to look like that? Do I just show up or do I, you know, like how does someone like maybe it's even a mindset shift? I approach it probably a little differently than someone else would. So like for me, it just looks like a lot of work. Because it is. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of like trial and error. It's a lot of testing things out that you like and don't like. It's a lot of like, you know, dragging your friends to the mall and like, or this whatever people have now, um, dragging them to stores and like trying to figure out like what looks good, getting second opinions, you know, a lot of times in this realm, like filming yourself, mm-hmm. seeing what you look like when you're on camera, like if you like it or don't like it. Um, you know, finding specific brands that you think work really well for you is a good way to start. Like finding three or four brands that you can be loyal to. That's great. Um, that's a good way to start. It's just, I'll tell a story of how we did this a little bit and how I, so I wish I had a better answer. No, you're, that's yeah. amazing. And what I like about this is that there's no right or wrong way to do this. No. And no. even the stylist that's sitting here that worked at Vogue with every celebrity you could ever imagine is like, sometimes you just don't know. Sometimes you have to try and it's actually a lot of trial and error. And it's like a big yeah. job to figure out your style. I never really like stretched outside my comfort zone with style that much. And then I remember we went and I, we bought that striped dress with the puffy sleeves. Do you remember that? I do. And I would have never in a million years worn that dress, tried it on. And I'm sure a lot of people that are listening right now can probably relate. You see something like, I could never wear that. Oh yeah. I could never, that would never be me. And you pushed me to just put it on. Yeah. What is it? Uh, That's, this is the fear that I, I get. I get pushed back with everybody all the time. Like, what does it matter? Just put it on. Who cares? You never know. And like the, I would say 50 to 60% of the time they put it on and they're like, oh, I never knew. This is like really cool. And I'm like, I know, I told you, just put it on. And then not just put it on, like zip it up. Yes. Like (laughs) put it on properly. Put on the shoe. Put on the shoe. Like, you know, like definitely. Yeah, it's, yeah, if you like something, put it on. What does it cost? It costs nothing to try something on. And it's like, you know, do it alone if you don't want to do it in front of somebody else. And it, just see. It's the only way that you're really going to grow and shift and, you know, evolve. Evolve. If, if you just, if you're even slightly curious about a shape or something or putting two things together, you're like, well, I don't know if that goes together. We'll just try it. Or yeah. in my case, I looked at that and I was like, no. 
but you, you're like, just put it on, yeah. give it a shot. And that's an analogy for life. You don't yeah. know until you try. I put that thing on and it ended up being the dress. Yeah. And I was like, this is amazing. And yeah. it opened my eyes. It changed my style forever. That puffy sleeve I always go for now. Yeah. That look from that dress. Yeah. And I would have never put it on my body if you didn't push me to. And that caused an evolution in my style. And it it caused me to like be like, oh, what else am I not trying? Yeah. That could be great. Yeah. So now if I don't like it on the hanger, I still try it. Yeah. Yeah. Because hang hanger doesn't tell you anything. Even websites sometimes don't really tell you anything. But yeah, no, I th would say like if there was one phrase that, you know, other than like, no, send it back, it would probably be like, ah, just try it on. Just, just try, try it. it on. Let's just try it. Just try it. Yeah, I say that probably daily. <laughs> There's so many life analogies to fashion. And I think that that is a really big one for me. Like, just give it a try, yeah. right? You, you don't know until you try. Yeah. Well, you know what I would like for you to talk about before we close is your RX program. So if somebody wants to work with you, you have a really cool, easy, simple way to do a closet clean out with people. Yes, I do have a, a little program where we can spend a couple of hours on Zoom together. And um you know, the needs are always a little bit different. Sometimes it's cleaning out. Sometimes it's like, how do I wear this? I've got this closet full of clothing. I don't know what to do with it. Um, you know, it, we can assess the holes in your wardrobe. I can give you some links on things to buy. I can tell you some designers that you should probably be looking at. And nine times out of 10, when I do it, like people are like, I don't know that designer. And then they start looking at it and start buying it and wearing it. And they're like, oh my God, this designer is like amazing. So um, I can sort of like, you know, fill in the gaps for you in that way. And then we can also clean out and get rid of a bunch of stuff that isn't really serving you. And um, it's very easy. Yeah. A couple hours on Zoom and then I give you um, tons of information after it's all over, like an assessment. So It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. It's fun. Yeah. I love a good closet purge. Nothing's better. It's it really so like, good. I love it. It's so therapeutic. I know. I That's why it's the RX. Too. <laughs> the prescription. I know you do. Well, yeah. before we end, I just want to acknowledge you in such a way. Like I really want you to know how much you've changed my life personally, professionally. Um, you've you've been someone that has taught me what true friendship is because we've been friends for a really long time. And I've loved dreaming with you. I've loved creating with you. And you are so good at what you do that. And it's like Annabeth's the type of person that she's working. She's worked really hard behind the scenes legitimately, as you heard her story for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And like she's definitely someone that's like a hidden gem like best kept secret that now I'm so proud of you for like coming being seen being on the show starting to share your story because Only for you Jen. <laughs> I know I know this was hard she was like I don't like there was it was hard but we got you here and I really want to acknowledge you for doing it because what you're sharing and what you're talking about there's a lot of people out there that talk about like what to wear in fashion and stuff but not a lot of people that have really been in this industry in the level that you've been in and then also has a mindset of you don't need to spend a bazillion dollars. Yeah. You don't need to be on trend. You don't need to wear the top designers. You just need to feel good in what you're wearing. And you need it's important to build a brand that feels good to you. Yeah, that is 100 percent true. Yeah. So I love you. I'm so grateful you joined me. Uh, where can people find you online? Yeah. Instagram or website. My okay. Instagram is just Annabeth Duval. Uh, and my website's just annabetteduval.com. <laughs> so, that's great. So easy. I wish everybody's website and Instagram was just their name. I'm very uncomplicated, Jen. You know this. It's perfect. <laughs> it was, I always, now my uh, speaker program, I'm telling people to hit their things with a simple stick. Simplicity is key. So everyone will remember it. At Annabeth Duval, annabetteduval.com. Um, thanks for being here. I love you. Thank you for having me. I equally love you just as much. And I'm equally grateful for your friendship. Love it. You're the best. You're the best. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and listening to The Jen Gottlieb Show. I'll see you next time. Let's go shopping.